recently you have probably heard me talking quite a bit about history, quite a bit about the lost nation of Tartaria, a nation that existed in Europe that nobody seems to know about. It's a nation that's been expunged from history and yet it still exists on many maps. And something else you've heard me talking about a great deal is the evidence suggesting a worldwide mud flood that happened as recently as 150 to 200 years ago. As I've mentioned before, there's a Russian channel run by a man called Philip Druzinen who is covering this quite extensively and I do recommend you go and look at the research that he's done on this because it is quite compelling. And you'll find that there is evidence of this mud flood that exists everywhere. I mean, it did happen, folks, and it was a physical flood, but it was not water, and it was an event that covered virtually the entire world. We can find evidence of this flood across Europe, across the Americas, even here in Australia. And evidence of this flood appears as buildings that have a sub-level, a level below ground, and also as many of the buildings that look like they were carved into rock faces, look like they were carved into cliffs, there's a very real possibility that they weren't carved into the cliffs, but simply the cliffs flowed over them, or perhaps the cliffs even became molten around them. But however it happened and however it manifested, suffice to say there is a good deal of evidence to indicate that the mud flood is a very, very genuine event, and it's very likely that it occurred in the mid to late 1840s. And there's a lot of people who've been putting a lot of research into this and a lot of information is being uncovered about what has truly happened in the past. And our history appears to be very, very different to what the mainstream has taught us, to what we've learned in academic institutions, what we learned in schools. In fact, none of what we are taught in schools of what our history is, is backed up by physical evidence. All the physical evidence says something quite different. And there may be some people that would debate that. They'd say, well, no, we've got a lot of physical evidence to support the official timeline. But really, when you look at the physical evidence, you can construct any story you want to make it sort of fit with the evidence. But you have to leave a great deal of it out, which is why there's so many great mysteries and anomalous objects and all the names they think up for all the things they can't explain. You know, and ultimately, folks, if there's one artifact that is out of place, then the official version is wrong. And there are literally hundreds of artifacts that are out of place, if the official version is to be believed at all. And again, these are all sort of listed as anomalous objects and great mysteries and all shrouded in secrecy and presented as something that we just don't know how they did it. But really, if you can face the very real possibility that they don't fit because the timeline and the history that we're given is completely wrong, then you begin to see a little bit of the bigger picture. And it is wrong, folks. Our history is wrong. I have no qualms in saying that. It's completely wrong. Most of it has been completely fabricated, and I would suggest that it's been done absolutely deliberately for a very specific reason. The question is, how did they do it? How did they erase history so effectively? And what really happened? brings me to my newest conspiracy theory and it's kind of like a, a brand it's a brand new one it's sweeping YouTube okay I love this one it's so interesting to me because there's so much evidence on the planet that you can go see yourself I actually just went to Austin Texas and I saw me some goddamn mud flood buildings all right this one is called the mud flood okay please look this up I love this I love 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 this okay Basically, let me give you the rundown. Not too long in our recent past, there was a massive, massive empire that spanned across the entire globe, okay? It's the biggest civilization that we have record of ever. No civilization that we know of has ever been as large as this one. Unfortunately, between 1850 and 1865, there was this massive reset or mud flood on the planet. Let me give you the who, what, where, and why. This supposed empire was called the Tartarian Empire or Tartary. 
It's not in textbooks, it's not in history books, but if you really dig for it, you see evidence of it. You see evidence of their flag. On old maps, you can see evidence of their empire and they were massive. It was pretty much the entire area of Asia and Russia, plus areas all over the world because their architecture is all over the world. We recognize it and we tend to call it Greco-Roman style, but that's what we've been told it is according to this theory. You can recognize these buildings because first of all, they're massive buildings. They have insane, beautiful, detailed stone architecture, almost like laser cut. There's massive archways, massive ceilings, huge stairs, huge stones, towers, fucking domes. Like they're, think of, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, the Capitol building, all, pretty much all the Capitol buildings in the United States, like the dome, the way it's structured, the columns, all of that. Um, there's buildings like that all over the world. You see them in South America, United States, all over Europe and Asia. It's just insane. This, this beautiful, it's, it's, it's massively beautiful architecture. What they tell us is that these buildings were built in the mid to late 1800s. Now, I could believe that over and from Europe, from the timeline I live in, that's plausible, but these buildings exist in the United States. There's a few things about these buildings that's, that really stands out and why it's so weird. First of all, they're out of place in the timeline. They don't make sense. Um, they come from a time when they're telling us that people were settling, they were migrating, and they were looking for gold. So they were they were exploring this country. They weren't setting permanent routes. Um, and if they were, they certainly weren't building these monolithic structures with materials that they didn't have anywhere near and machinery that didn't supposedly exist yet. So it just it just raises a lot of flags like, the, the fact that our country is supposedly only so old and yet you have, you know, cities like New York that are way older, way older than they supposedly say they are. Um, just, I mean, just built out for, for millions of people. Why would someone come to a brand new country with a couple thousand people and build it up for millions before it was, before they knew it would be populated with that many people? It just doesn't make any sense for them to build out a city like San Francisco to the same exact grid structure that they use to this day in the mid 1800s when there supposedly was only like a thousand settlers there. They're gridded for millions of people. It just, it just does not make sense. And this is the best part of it. This is where the mud flood part comes in. Have you ever seen those buildings? They're always old and they're usually downtown buildings in big cities all over the world. And the, the, the street kind of slants down but the building doesn't slant with it. And the building is almost like built into the, the, the ground to where the point where the windows like come out of the ground. And so you'll have like a little bit of a window and then the next window will be a little more showing. And then the next one have a little more showing. And you're like, who the fuck put windows into the ground? It doesn't make any sense. So that's how you spot a mud flood building. A lot of times they've been torn down or reconstructed to look a little bit different or to look new or to hide the fact that, you know, they weren't built by us. So I really encourage you to look up videos about this because you have to see the photos to understand. You have to see the pictures from cities all over the world from the 1800s that are empty. And, it, and it's all over the world, like the biggest cities of the world, not a soul on the street, 11 a.m. in the daytime. When did that picture get taken? And it's not something that's just unique to one or two places. It's all over the fucking world. And there's like these high def, super crisp photos from back when a time when we weren't supposed to have that technology. There's just, it's just a lot of things just don't add up. And that's why this one's so interesting. So the story goes, there was this empire, Tartaria, Tartar, Tartary, and they were this great massive empire that spanned the globe and they were using things like free energy. They did not have a capitalist system. They were drawing energy out of the air in Tesla-like instruments. So if you know anything about Nikola Tesla, he actually ties into this because a lot of people think that he was a Tartarian or his technology was strictly from the Tartarian empire because 
if you look at the buildings and what what they used to look like they appear to have energy drawing technology on these buildings so it's believed that they were using free energy they were doing all the all of these amazing things that we would love to have now and somebody thought that that shouldn't be free anymore and they should charge for it and they want to capitalize on it 